Okay, this is what we have done in um, in lab nine. So let's open the same file. Okay. And okay, so that, so that's what we had in after lab nine, and we can load the fan parts. Okay. Then go back to the same. All right. So um, a little bit different. Uh, from Doc Zada's model, and uh, turn off this first. So he had uh, he has two bushings here. That's why you can see in his um, Apple Six file, you will see this extra two bushings. And uh, as he explained in the class, since solid, okay, solid uh, element only has uh, one, two, three. Uh, degree of freedom, and this bean and this bar has uh, one, two, six, all six of uh, degree of freedom. So you don't really need a C bush here to free uh, the rotation uh, because we killed five, four, six here, and you, you want to free the rotation here, but they don't have the rotation by nature. So that's why you can do this. Uh, you can put Zbush here as well, and uh, to me the uh, the advantage of a two bushing here will be uh, you will be able to see the force in this uh, bushing, so you can see that's equal and opposite, which means this is a two force member. Okay, that's the catch, and uh, I believe you will be able to investigate this point. Uh, in NX, like the question mark, maybe. So, anyway, we'll continue um, on the steps first. So, first, we're gonna delete this uh, constraint. Okay, that's uh, you can delete this or you can modify this. So, let's I'll just modify this constraint. Double click here, and you got two subjects which are two nodes so we're gonna deselect this two nodes so press shift and uh, box select so you can see everything is deselected then let's go back here select this node where this uh, load is applied okay. and let's click OK and make sure this is only one node and as you can see, we have a constraint here that kills the z-direction movement. Okay, and you can still see that because uh, in the container here, which is not used in this uh, solution, you can see all the history we have. You can, which is this constraint is inactive, and if you don't feel comfortable, we can right-click and delete this. Okay, so that's like a container for all the solutions. We have one solution here, which you can say it's uh, one case. We can add another case uh, for different load and constraints. So we only used uh, this two constraint here, and we have two force here. And then we are going to modify the number here as well. That will be 10 pounds, apply, okay. Second will be 10 pounds as well. Okay, that's all uh, we have to do in the in the same. And let's go back to the fan. Okay. So in the fan, first we're gonna change the property of the material. And here is the wood or whichever name you have. Okay, we can right click. It's like very easy for you at this uh, stage and I just lost the window okay. so as you can see we have uh, wood here and you probably don't have this Young's modulus uh, shown here so if you want you can choose columns configure and uh, you will see a lot different things 
So you can pick Young's modules from this window, then you, you will be able to see this uh, convenient thing. So we are going to change the number here. And first we want to enable the overridden. Okay. Um, sorry, not this one. Uh, it should be Young's modulars. Change the units first. That will be PSI. Then the value is 4000. Then make sure the uh, Poisson's ratio is 0.4. Okay. Then we're going to pick wood and click OK. So now we have uh, changed the material property and to make sure you, we can right click on the name here and go to material view expand this material so that's all the material we have been using uh, in this model and we have wood you can right click and you have information here so as you can see the Young's modulus is 4000 psi and uh, the Poisson's ratio is 0.4 then we can also check which material uh, is corresponding to which part. So if we hide this piece, I'll be here. Okay. So if you have a lot of different materials, you can come to this uh, view. Let's go back to standard view. Okay. All right. Next step, that will be uh, let's say uh, material force. Constraint. Pretty much, we don't have anything to do here. And uh, for convenience, we probably need a uh, coordinate system to be in the uh, symmetry plane of this handles, and uh, the direction of x should be looks point from this handle to that handle. So, which will be a little bit convenient. So let's insert a new coordinate system. Okay, so let's go to insert model preparation uh, coordinate system. Now, here uh, we'll be needing a Cartesian system, and uh, we can choose different method to create this. So we know the z will be the same as the absolute. So we need z and the, the x will be at the direction of the force. And we need an orange. Okay. So first the orange point. Uh, you can put it between this uh, two spiders. Okay. Then you can also put uh, like in the center of uh, this uh, two spider here. So Personally, I will put it here. So let's go ahead. Uh, turn off those. That will be much easier. So the origin point. Let's click here, the small icon. Then we will choose between two points. Okay, the first point will be the center of this. Second point, center of the lower spiders. Okay. So that will be uh, in the middle plane and uh, the same distance to the top and bottom also it's on the axle of these two handles so from this point to the spider you will get the distance of uh, from this axle to the point of uh, applied force okay And it'll be in the middle of this uh, uh, pin or in the middle of this uh, handle. 